Why don't pink flamingos ever feel guilty? Because they always eat balanced meals, standing on one leg. Good day, folks. Welcome to our wild and wacky culinary adventure. Today, we're taking a whimsical journey into the world of flamingo cuisine. Yes, you heard right. Flamingo. Not your average bird and certainly not your average meal. Now, I know what you're thinking. Are they really going to cook a flamingo? Well, here's the kicker. We're not, but we'll have a laugh pretending. So, let's imagine for a moment how one might go about catching, preparing, and cooking a pink flamingo. Remember, this is all in good fun. We absolutely adore these beautiful birds and would never recommend actually dining on one. If you're ready for a flight of fancy, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to join us on this feathery fiasco. Now let's dive into the world of pink flamingos, shall we? Ever tried catching a flamingo? It's not a walk in the park, mate. Picture this. You're tiptoeing through marshy wetlands, trying not to step on a crocodile's tail. Flamingos, they love these places. Did you know they can run up to 16 miles per hour? That's faster than your grandma on a mobility scooter. Now let's say you've managed to corner one. Be careful not to get a face full of beak. These birds have a mean right hook. They're not just pretty pink lawn ornaments, you know. They're feathered ninjas. And then there's the issue of their diet. You'd think they'd munch on a nice worm or two, but no. They prefer algae and tiny shrimp. That's right, shrimp. They're the seafood connoisseurs of the bird world, so catching a flamingo, not as easy as it looks. But hey, if you're ever in the neighborhood of a flamingo-infested marsh, remember, always bring your running shoes and a shrimp cocktail. All right, imagine we've got our flamingo. Now, how do you prepare a bird that's more legs than body? Well, you'd start by trying to find the body. It's a bit like playing Where's Waldo, only this time, Waldo is a bird's body hidden among a tangle of flamingo legs. Now you might be thinking, what about those feathers? Well, plucking a flamingo is a bit like trying to pull a cactus out of the desert. You're more likely to end up with a handful of prickles than anything else. But let's pretend we've managed it, and we've got ourselves a bare-naked flamingo. Next, we'd look at the diet of these pink beauties, which is mainly brine shrimp and blue-green algae. It's their diet that gives them that lovely pink hue. So, if you ever fancy a change in your skin tone, you know what to do. Just kidding, please don't start munching on algae and shrimp, unless you're a flamingo, of course. Now let's talk about the flamingo's anatomy. They've got one of the longest necks in the bird kingdom, second only to the swan. So if you were actually trying to prepare a flamingo, you'd have to deal with that neck. I'm picturing something like a flamingo scarf, or maybe a feather boa. No, wait, we've already plucked the feathers. Let's stick with the scarf idea. And then there's the matter of the legs. I mean, these birds have legs for days, literally. Their legs can be longer than their entire body. So what do you do with all that leg? Flamingo drumsticks, anyone? But remember, friends, this is all just a bit of fun. We're not really suggesting you go out and catch yourself a flamingo for dinner. In fact, we highly recommend against it. Flamingos are protected species in many parts of the world. And besides, they probably taste like shrimp-infused bubblegum. And there you have it, a prepped flamingo. Only in our wildest dreams, right? Now for the piece de resistance, cooking our long-legged friend. If you thought catching and prepping a flamingo was a hoot, wait until you see the culinary acrobatics we're about to perform. Imagine this, if you will. We've got our flamingo all prepped and ready to go. We'd stick it onto a rotisserie, not unlike a chicken. Except this isn't a chicken. It's a bird with legs that could outrun an Olympic sprinter. Now, our bird would be slowly turning, roasting to a gorgeous golden pink, the color of a sunset over Uluru. You might be thinking, what seasoning would we use? Well, I'd recommend a generous sprinkle of pink Himalayan salt for a touch of irony. While our flamingo is roasting, let's talk about the bird's diet. Did you know flamingos eat a type of algae that turns their feathers pink? So. Technically, we're roasting a vegetarian algae-eating bird. That's a new spin on the green diet, isn't it? Now, for the side dish. If we were to accompany our flamingo, a crocodile salad would be quite the choice. Picture this, crunchy lettuce, juicy tomatoes, and a generous helping of crocodile tail. A bit of a predator-prey reversal, isn't it? But don't worry, we're not recommending you go out and wrestle a croc. That's a whole different kind of cooking show, mate. As our flamingo roasts, the air would fill with a tantalizing aroma. You'd be salivating, 
anticipating the first bite of this exotic dish. But remember, this is all for fun. We wouldn't actually eat a flamingo. They're far too pretty to eat and besides, I hear they taste like a mixture of chicken and shrimp. And who wants to eat a shrimpy chicken? So after a good two hours on the rotisserie, our flamingo would be perfectly cooked. Golden pink, crispy on the outside, tender on the inside. A culinary masterpiece that's more art than food. There you have it, a perfectly roasted flamingo that we'll never actually eat. Now what wine pairs best with imaginary flamingo, you ask? Well, naturally it's a pink rose. Just as our majestic feathered friend stands tall and pink, a blush rose stands proud in your glass. With its delicate fruity notes, it's as if each sip is a flight through a summer sunset, just like our winged buddy. But wait, there's more. Did you know that flamingos aren't naturally pink? They get their iconic color from their diet of shrimp and algae. Similarly, the pink hue of our rose comes from the skin of red grapes. Now isn't that a beak-smacking coincidence? And for a side dish, how about a towering stack of pancakes because why not? It's as appropriate as eating a flamingo, right? Don't forget to press that like button if you enjoyed our culinary flight of fancy. Share this video with your mates and hit subscribe for more wild and whimsical foodie adventures. And that's how you cook a flamingo, or rather, how you don't. Remember, we love our feathered friends too much to eat them. Until next time, mates.